Thank you. Happy birthday, Marines! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, I'm Kevin Hastings, Social Studies Department Chairperson at Maple Point Middle School. Welcome to our annual Veterans Day celebration. Veterans Day is a time for us to pay our respects to those who have served. For one day, we stand united in respect for you, our veterans. When first celebrated as Armistice Day, this day marked the end of World War I, formally recognized on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. Today, we continue to celebrate our veterans. We particularly remember all veterans from our Maple Point and the Chamonix communities. You are remembered today and every day by our students and staff, and we greatly appreciate the sacrifice and service you have provided in order to protect all of the rights and freedoms we now enjoy. As President Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Our hope is that all of our students live by the example set by veterans from throughout the country in terms of service, responsibility, and sacrifice. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andy Stoker, and I'm the proud building principal here at Maple Point Middle School. While our veterans ceremony looks a bit different, the significance remains the same. I would like to thank our veterans for their service and coming out today. I am honored to be the son of a veteran and thank him, along with all of our veterans, for their dedication, sacrifice, and service. 
I also would like to thank the families of our veterans as they watch their family member go off to protect our freedoms, their sacrifice does not go unnoticed. As we remember and recognize our veterans' service above self to uphold our country's security and our people's freedom, may we reflect as we hear, understand, and appreciate the commitment and the sacrifices that are made for us so we that may enjoy the many freedoms that we take for granted. Former President Ronald Reagan stated, Veterans Day gives Americans a special opportunity to pay tribute to those men and women who throughout history have left their homes, their loved ones, to serve our country. Their willingness to give freely and unselfishly of themselves, even their lives, in defense of our democratic principles has given our great country the security that we enjoy today. Through war and peace, valiant Americans have answered the call, serving with honor and fidelity. Our hope is today we learn from their examples and the stories told from these brave individuals and their commitment to our country. We challenge our students to now look on a daily basis on how you can help and serve a greater cause than yourself. Lastly, I'd like to thank our teachers and staff who have worked to put this program together. They have rose above current challenges to continue this great program and honor our veterans. Their efforts are truly appreciated. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Hello, Maple Point Class of 2022 and the Chamonix High School Class of 2026. My name is Tom Costi, and I am the Chairman of the Board of the Middletown Township Supervisors. I am honored to be joining you again today to celebrate and recognize our veterans across the area. Veterans Day is a day where we honor our veterans who have served in the armed forces. There are many across our Lower Bucks County, and you, you'll watch the parade later on today of watching the veterans drive by you, and as you, they drive by, please respectfully wave to them and thank them for their service. It means a lot to a veteran when somebody says thank you to them, but it means more when students say thank you because they now realize um, that you're starting to understand the sacrifices that they did. So when you get up tomorrow, and today tomorrow is Veterans Day and you will be off from school, I'd like to ask you to do one thing. Take some time out to recognize our veterans. Take some time out just to say thank you to them. Maybe even attend one of the ceremonies where they're honoring our veterans. It could be your mother, it could be your father, it could be an aunt or an uncle, grandfather, but just take the time to make a phone call and just thank them for their service and for what they did for our country. Our country is what we are today because of our veterans, and we have to appreciate them and really recognize the sacrifices that they gave for our country. So I'm going to end this real quick and make this short and sweet for you, but do me a favor. Don't use tomorrow as just a day off. Reach out. Thank a veteran. Thank them for their service. Because it's because of them that we can say, God bless America. And it's because of them that you're free and able to go to school and have the choices that you make in this country and across our area. So thank you again for having me. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your parade. And please, thank a veteran. Take care now. Good morning to the Maple Point family. I want to once again thank you for the great work you're doing in honoring our local veterans. To the men and women that are there today that have served our country, I want to thank you for that service and commitment. And I also want to thank your families for the sacrifices they made while, while you were serving us. Um, to the students, there's a great opportunity to learn from these men and women and the sacrifices they made to serve a greater cause, which is our country. Uh, as you know, when I get to attend the school there, I always say to you, always please find a way to give back to your community and make a difference. And, and these men and women that are veterans certainly have done that. To uh, the, the administration, the staff at Maple Point, thank you once again for being great community stewards. And I'm always happy to come back there and discuss this in greater detail. Thank you. Hey everybody, Brian Fitzpatrick here, and thank you to the Maple Point Middle School for having me join you uh, virtually for uh, your 2021 Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, tomorrow, uh, on Veterans Day, we honor those who served our nation through incredible acts of heroism. Uh, the men and women uh, we are honoring on this day personally sacrificed for liberty, for freedom, uh, and for the American way by risking their lives, putting their, their physical health on the line, their psychological and emotional health on the line, all in the name of serving a cause bigger than themselves. And the freedoms that we defend, uh, all of us, every day, uh, are in honor of them. Uh, and they kept our country safe by, uh, again, their incredible acts of heroism. 
And uh, it's because of what they've done and what they continue to do every day uh, that make the United States of America a beacon of democracy uh, and a nation that is looked up to across the world. And our community's gratitude to our veterans is never ending uh, as we recognize their commitment to serve a cause bigger than themselves uh, and making it possible for us to enjoy freedom each and every day. Uh, we should all be humbled uh, by the uh, acts of courage and heroism of all of our veterans, uh, and I remain uh, committed and fully dedicated uh, to supporting our veterans and their families each and every day in Congress. And I think it's always important that we remember uh, that the United States of America is only 245 years old, and yet we are the world's oldest democracy. Uh, no democracy on this planet has survived longer. Uh, and the lesson that we should take from that is that freedom uh, is not a given. It's something that has to be fought for and defended every day. And that is precisely what our amazing veterans uh, across our great nation have done to protect our freedom. So we honor them, we love them, uh, and today uh, and every day, thank a veteran uh, for their service. May God bless all of our veterans, and may God bless our nation.
Flanders Fields by John McRae, May 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce, heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Freedom is Not Free by Kelly Strong. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud. He'd stand out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears, how many pilots' planes shot down, how many died at sea, how many foxholes were soldiers' graves, no freedom isn't free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen, when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington, no freedom isn't free. What does patriotism mean to me? The word patriotism means a lot of things. The first thought that comes to mind is devotion to one's country, but it means so much more than that. This past year, with everything that has gone on, has shown us that we, the people of the United States of America, can persist through adversity. We watched as thousands upon thousands of lives were lost, businesses struggling and having to close down, people having to find a new way to live while trying to make ends meet. Most importantly, the time we had to spend separated from loved ones. We had to find a new way to communicate while still being separated. Our education and learning took the hardest hit in addition to everything else. Every day, waking up early to do the same thing over and over again, life feeling like a merry-go-round. I remember sitting in my bedroom, staring at a screen, knowing that my teacher was trying to teach a new subject, but my phone was so close, just at arm's reach. A world of subjects that my mind could actually engage in than having to stare at a bunch of black windows. This past year, we've had to go through a lot of changes and it definitely hasn't always been easy. We've had to come together like never before, help out our neighbors, and reach other people in need of help. Again, we come back to the question, what does patriotism mean to me? To me, patriotism means staying tall and firm when life such times get hard. It's easier said than done and definitely not always the easiest thing to do. This saying doesn't have to be used only when a worldwide pandemic happens. This phrase can be used in your daily life too. Whether it's going to take a challenging test, playing against a rival team in your sport, or being organized when life gets too overwhelming. Being a good American consists of being helpful, speaking your mind, standing up for your beliefs and values, and being a leader for other people and yourself. In conclusion, patriotism means a lot of things to all of us. No matter what it means to you, we the people of the United States will preserve in times of trouble, come together when things get hard, and in the end, fight for what is right. How can I be a good American? Being a good American shows that people respect our country, appreciate America, and other various definitions. It truly is the choosing of what kind of citizen you are. Patriotism is a key role to being a good American. 
Being a good citizen, representing and respecting our home, and showing you are worthy of living here are all great examples of patriotism. A lot of brutal things have happened within the last year, including the pandemic, political interferences, and many other worldwide problems, which in fact global warming falls into this category. And some of these faults are dividing our country, which doesn't pay the respect it deserves. Sometimes it almost feels like all the hard work people put in to get here led to nothing in the end. Although there are those few handfuls of representatives sprinkled in who step up and show themselves as true, good Americans. The amount of people who risk their lives to help our country is humbling. These people sacrifice their time, family, and other skills they can be using to help us. Unfortunately, there are the people who do not take this into account. My grandfather served during the Vietnam War, and it enlightens me when people shake his hand and thank him for his service. Little acts of contribution are even helpful in setting yourself up as a good American. For instance, the 22nd Pledge of Allegiance. Just by stating this oath shows how you are appreciative of our democracy, freedom, and justice. Most kids take this pledge five times a week, directed to the symbol of our home, and it really shows an understanding of how little you can do to still maintain a good stand as an American citizen. Being friendly to others even qualifies as showing you're a good American. And as easy as that sounds, there are numerous other ways to be a representative American. For example, with all the COVID complications occurring in our world, there are many specializations that are helping to run our country. Police, medics, firefighters, and other essentials play a huge role. With everyone pitching in, it helps in these hard times and really shows how much we're doing to keep our land alive. In conclusion, not only being a patriot is desirable, but it is a solid foundation to being a good American. Hello everyone, my name is Colonel Stanley Barron. I live in Villanova, Pennsylvania. I started my military military career right after I got out of high school. I wanted to serve my country and uh, I uh, joined the army and uh, I subsequently trained and became a uh, tank commander in the second armored division, uh, which has an illustrious history, also known as the hell on wheels division. Uh, a division that General Patton commanded at one time before he went on to be a Corps commander and then Army commander. Thereafter, I served in the United States Air Force and had my combat uh, time in uh, in Korea. I uh, was uh, wounded on a combat mission. I fortunately survived and uh, uh, subsequently was uh, transported to the Philadelphia Naval Hospital, which was the closest military uh, medical institution closest to my home, and underwent therapy and treatment there. I uh, subsequently uh, reported back to active duty at uh, Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane, Washington. Uh, Thereafter, I served in many other capacities. Uh, As I said, initially I was in the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army Reserve, and the Pennsylvania Air National Guard. So in my 91 years on the planet, I served my country for a total of 42 years. Oh, I'm, I'm... very proud to have served my country and would have done so even longer, but I reached the age of 60 when it was a mandatory uh, retirement. My loyalty and devotion to the country always came first, and uh, I'm proud to have served. I would recommend anyone uh, to, to do their duty and service to the country. Richard E. Eljuk Jr., Navy, Commander 05. Joseph E. Lyle, Army, Staff Sergeant. Fred Evans, Air Force, E-5 Staff Sergeant. William F. Weidel Jr., 
Army, Specialist 4th Class. Christopher W. Vanderstein, Marine Corps, Private 1st Class. William F. Weidel III, Marine Corps, Corporal. Andy Troutman, Army, Specialist E4. Charles W. Clare, Army, Private First Class. James Anthony, Army, Specialist 4. Earl Cudney, Army, MP. John Charles Mitchell, Army, Staff Sergeant. Craig Bronish, Navy, Repairman, Second Class. Frank B. Morgan, Army, Lieutenant Colonel. Michael Sable Jr., Army, Private First Class. Augusta Shubin, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, WAAC. Benjamin Shubin, Army, Private. Robert Stewart, Navy, Captain. Timothy Word, Army, U.S. Army Special Forces, Special Forces Medical Sergeant. Catherine Woodman, Navy, Petty Officer Second Class. Alfred Hawthorne, Marine Corps, Corporal. Eugene Travers, Navy, Petty Officer Third Class. Harry Bicken, Army, Captain. Thomas J. Mulholland, Jr., Army, Specialist Four. Kara Bicken, Army, Battalion Commander ROTC. Francis Weinman, Army, Corporal. Mark Wirt, Air Force Sergeant. William F. Bowers, Navy, Corpsman, Second Class. Thomas Muniz, Marine Corps, Private First Class. George C. Odie, Jr., Army 3rd Air Force Combat and Intelligence, Private First Class. Charles Ewer, Coast Guard, Gunsman 3rd Class. Mitchell St. Lawrence, Marine Corps, Sergeant E-5. Ronald M. Knickerbocker, Army, third class petty officer. Joseph Foley, Army, E-4. Robert Edwards, Army, private first class. Mary K. Thompson, Air Force, second lieutenant. Daniel Thompson, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Tech Sergeant. Gerald Schmidt, Army, Specialist, Fourth Class. Robert Schaefer, Army, Sergeant E-5. Robert Neff, Army, Private. Jerry Chonin, Army, Private. Joe Tagliavia, Navy, Petty Officer First Class. Arthur Trexler, Navy, Petty Officer Third Class. Joseph Yurgiski, Petty Officer First Class, Specialist Fifth Class. Leo Zercher, Marine Corps, Corporal. Andrew Zabrowski, 
Army Airborne Specialist, Chris Shantry, Marine Corps Sergeant, Patrick Murphy, Army Captain, Fran Drummond, Marine Corps, Lance Corporal, Rex Corlett, Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel, Walt Schneider, Navy, Petty Officer 3rd Class, Melissa Robinson, Pennsylvania Army National Guard, Walter A. Moore, Navy, Chief Petty Officer. Tom Hauserman, Navy, Petty Officer, 2nd Class, E-5. George A. Lover, Army, Corporal. Gus Cowles, Marine Corps, Staff Sergeant. Floyd Smith, Army, Sergeant. John Davenport III, Navy, Sonair Technician, 1st Class, E-6. Ryan Sullivan, Marine Corps, Corporal. Jack Pashley, Army, E-5. Matt Pashley, Army and National Guard, E-5. Craig Schneider, Air Force Captain. Herb Brooks, Royal Air Force, Air Craftsman, 1st Class. John R. Hastings, Navy, Petty Officer, 2nd Class. Ray Weldy, Army, E-4. Eugene Burrell, Army, U.S. Air Force, Tech Sergeant. Joe Fondy, Army, Specialist, 5th Class. Joe Fondy, Marine Corps, Sergeant. Virginia Fondy, Marine Corps, Lance Corporal. Teresa Abramowicz, Navy, HM2E5. Robert F. Waller, Army First Infantry, Sergeant First Class. Charles Huber, Army Infantry, Spec 4. George Paul Charles Argus, Army Private. Charles P. Argus, Army Force, Airman First Class. Charles E. Argus, Marine Corps Corporal. John S. Wado, Marine Corps Captain. Richard Lewis Tosti, Navy, E3 First Class. Richard Lewis Tosti, Jr., Marine Corps, E5 Sergeant. Bolinski, Tuso, Army Major. Fred Bodenshops, Army, Corporal. Jim Dawson, Army, Specialist. Mitchell St. Lawrence, Marine Corps, Sergeant. Lauren Murphy Kent, Navy, Army Medical Corps, Second Lieutenant. Matthew Paul Kent, Army, Lieutenant Colonel. Edward Johnson Jr., Army, Corporal. Derek Scott, Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant. Derek Scott, Army, Private First Class. Shelby Kopp, Navy, Senior Chief Petty Officer E8. Victor Bandish, Army, Specialist E4. Mark P. Sajerski, Navy, E3 Airman. Mark S. Summers, Air Force, Staff Sergeant. Joseph R. Donato, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, Sentinel. James Phelan, Army, Specialist 4. Anthony J. Kunick, Army, SP4. Frank Emmerich, Army, Sergeant. Francis Meenan, Army, T5 Corporal. William Bakes, 
Joyce Sherman, Army Nurse Corps, Second Lieutenant. Jack O'Neill, Army, E-4. Robert Mitchell, Navy, Petty Officer, Third Class. Jack DeAngelis, Navy, Carpenter's Mate, First Class. George Kokik, Marine Corps, Corporal E-4. Heather Salhanik, Navy, Master at Arms E-5. Daryl Puzan, Army, SP-4. James E. Kennedy Jr., Air Force, Master Sergeant. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Rob McGee, Superintendent of the Neshaminy School District. In closing, I'd like to thank our guests. Colonel Barron, United States Army, retired. Congressman Fitzpatrick, Representative Ferry, Supervisor Tosti, and Principal Sokol. I'd also like to thank teachers and staff on the Maple Point Middle School's Veterans Day Ceremony Committee, and of course, the eighth graders at Maple Point and their parents. Teachers, staff, students, and parents, you have successfully continued Ms. Schmidt's tradition and legacy that will live in our community, honoring those women and men who have served our country. Thank you, and well done. To our veterans, you are part of a long history of representing our country and protecting freedom and liberty around the world. I am reminded again of a proverb I use frequently. A community grows great when people plant trees in whose shade they know they shall never sit. A community grows great when people plant trees in whose shade they know they shall never sit. Veterans, you have not only grown our community, you've grown our nation. And the shade of those trees you planted during your years of service will and have benefited millions of Americans for many years, decades, and centuries to come. To the young people watching today, I challenge you to find a way to serve others and our nation. Today's ceremony demonstrates a number of ways to serve. The most obvious is the path taken by our veterans we honor today. Each swore an oath to, and I quote, support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemy, foreign and domestic, and to bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed above them. Then each gave years of their life to carry out that oath. Among our speakers today is another group who have sworn an oath to serve others and their nation. Congressman Fitzpatrick, Representative Ferry, and Supervisor Tosti serve as elected officials supporting our democratic republic. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Maple Point staff and students represent another way to serve as they have answered Dr. King's question with action over the past 20 years as they serve others and their nation by honoring our veterans. A community grows great when people plant trees in whose shade they know they shall never sit. To echo Dr. King, what trees will you plant so that others may someday enjoy their shade. To all, thank you. God bless you and your families, and God bless the United States of America.